the quiz portion of tonight's show. The game is simple. We're going to play two pieces of video for you, both from MSNBC over the weekend. You watch them and you tell us who's dumber. The first comes from Preacher Without a Church, Al Sharpton. Sharpton once worked as James Brown's road manager, so he knew Aretha Franklin well. As part of his tribute to the deceased soul singer, he said this. So in the words of my late friend Aretha Franklin, show some R-E-S-P-I-C-T. Did you catch that? Watch the short version again. Pay attention to the spelling. Show some R-E-S-P-I-C-T. Al Sharpton doesn't have much of a formal education. He started preaching as part of a road show with Mahalia Jackson during elementary school. He never learned to spell even simple words. He frequently makes up verbs out of thin air. If you've watched his show, you know he doesn't read the teleprompter well and couldn't if you held him at gunpoint. Now, Michelle Goldberg of the New York Times, by contrast, is unwaveringly eloquent. She's got an advanced degree from one of our country's most prestigious universities. She's written a couple of books, one attacking Christianity, the other praising abortion, that lots of critics loved. She writes for the most famous newspaper in the world. If you were in journalism and you got 100 on every test they gave you, you'd be Michelle Goldberg. She's the best our system produces. Here's what she said on MSNBC. This is the most vocal president, at least in real time, that we've had in recent memory, right? He is the leader of the free world. Oh, no, he's not. He's not the leader of the free world, but sorry. Well, <laughs> he's part of a block that includes Vladimir Putin, Duterte. Well, he's, he's not, not, he's not rounding the people up and murdering, murdering them yeah. without any, uh, you know, yeah. due process. He'd certainly yeah. like to. I, well, uh, well, anyway, I, I, I don't yeah. think you can say that definitively. <laughs> so who's dumber? It's not really close, is it? And it's not the guy who can't spell respect. He's not stupid. That's why he's been able to game our system for so long. But the other one, Michelle Goldberg, isn't gaming our system. She is our system. That's why her comments and countless comments like hers are so fascinating. Our ruling class loses control in the presence of Trump. It becomes clinically hysterical. What a normal person might consider embarrassing or buffoonish, they find existentially threatening. They abandon reason and proportion and decency. They don't even make sense. What is that about? Well, the short answer is that Trump terrifies them. These are people whose main talents are glibness and obedience, and that's enough to succeed in the globalized economy. That's what the system requires, lemming-like conformity, and that's what they deliver. They're not very impressive. On some level, they know they're not very impressive, and it worries them. Instead of trying to become more impressive, more creative and useful, they maintain their rule by bullying, even as they place themselves outside the bounds of criticism. It's been a very good deal for them. And then two years ago, when seemingly out of nowhere, Donald Trump showed up, half unhinged, and started saying all sorts of forbidden things, some of which were demonstrably true. This threatened to expose their ill-gotten power and privilege, and that scared them. They're afraid because they know they're guilty. They've watched the country decline as they have ascended, just as the rest of us have watched. They know what they've done. They understand exactly how much they have to lose by changing the way things are. And that's why they're yelling so loudly. Ann Coulter just wrote a brand new book called Resistance is Futile, How the Trump-Hating Left Lost Its Collective Mind. It's out tomorrow. We're honored to be the first stop on her book tour. And it's great to see you. What did you learn spending all this time forensically looking at the anti-Trump left? <laughs> um, well, I think your description just there describes the never-Trumpers beautifully. With the left, I think it's more that they just, they really do hate deplorables. Um, they hate the Walmart crowd, they, and that's what they see in Trump. They're able to attack um, the gun culture and Walmart uh, and middle-class middle Americans by attacking Trump without getting called on it because, you know, technically he's a billionaire who's president. Um, but really, at the bottom of it, they just think he's icky. And so they go on and on about this existential crisis facing America and, and Russian collusion um, without allowing anyone else in their little closed set so that even smart people, as you point out, they become crazy and crazier and they are rewarded for being crazy as 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 John Brennan and Clapper and Comey were I mean at one point um, 
It was the left who wanted to chop those three up and feed them to the dogs. And all they had to do is start sending unhinged tweets, as John Brennan has, and suddenly he's a hero. I go, I go through in my book not only all of the lies Brennan has told um, and why he was hated, and for good reason, um, as head of the CIA and just constantly lying, 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 left really hated him. Then as soon as he starts sending those crazy tweets about Trump being, you know, treasonous and history will judge you, um, I just have one sentence of the names he was called after that. Um, um, you know, one of the most honored men, MSNBC, um, deep credibility, CNN. Suddenly, it's a Cinderella story. Isn't that happened? <laughs> Isn't that great? They welcomed him back. <laughs> can I ask you a question that I've been thinking about for the past year and a half, and I don't know the answer? So the group that, that the left hates most, the middle class, as you just correctly said, the group that Trump represents, is also the group doing the most poorly. The middle class is dying and shrinking. Its life expectancy has declined. Why don't they feel sorry for the middle class? It is their hatred of Trump has 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 caused them to lose all reason. Um, I mean, it seems to me it used to be well, both political parties would claim to care about the working man, the middle yes. class family. Um, both political parties used to want to defend the border. Both political parties used to attack the concept of anchor babies um, and illegal aliens committing crimes and legal aliens committing crimes. But, I, I, I mean, you do kind of worry. <laughs> Trump had this uncanny ability to raise important issues that Americans care about, but it's getting to the point. I mean, now, you know, my governor um, says America wasn't, wasn't ever great. <laughs> If that's what he's driving them to, um, part of it is, of course, the, that's what their base or a large portion of their base wants. Um, but I really wish we could sit down, liberals, and and ask them why. I mean, I'm, I'm not a waitress at Wendy's. I'm not a union bookkeeper, but I care about my fellow American. Why don't they? Well, it's a great, que it's a great question. It's an obsession of this show, and I, and I honestly don't know the answer. But I do agree with you that it does seem like Trump, among other things, has totally corroded their own standards. Like, they will say anything. I mean, you yes. can make a case against Trump and tell the truth, but they don't. Yes, I mean, if, if the resistance were smart, I think they would read my book. It gives them excellent advice, which is attack Trump on the stuff he's actually done. <laughs> don't keep, as my friend Joe DeVito, right. DeVito says, it's a buffet. Don't keep bringing your own food to the buffet. There's plenty there to attack. You don't need to make things up, but they make things up, and the stories get crazier and crazier, and as luck would have it, I don't have a job, so I can spend months going through Nexus <laughs> to, to see the complete insane contradictions of the, you know, them saying... <laughs> The dossier is, is um, you know, it's proved. We know it's true because it was used to get a FISA warrant. It was used to get a FISA warrant on, on Carter Page. And then 10 months later, we find out that the dossier was Hillary Clinton-funded research. And suddenly, where did you get the idea that the dossier had anything to do with this investigation, with the warrant on Carter Page? And, you know, I have the quotes side by side, 10 oh, months Oh, I bet apart. you do. Because I, <laughs> I read your column. And what people who know you on television may not know is that you write your own stuff and you are a brilliant writer, and I mean that. I think even people who Thank disagree you. with you would agree with that. So I hope this book sells a ton of copies. It's out tomorrow. Resistance is Feudal, greatest title of a book this year. Thank is you. Is really in either Thank words? You, you can't me. have a oh. diversive and inclusive country and keep the First Amendment? Well, yes, of course you can. We've had it for a few hundred years. Yeah. Um, what was strange about the survey uh, which I noticed immediately when it landed in my inbox, and it was odd that the New York Times presented it as if, well, we've covered all the bases here, um, is that the only breakdown, they did age breakdowns, gender breakdowns, political party breakdowns, the only um, ethnic breakdown was black and white Americans. Um, do they think we're living in the 1950s? Um, because what is striking is this is, of course, another problem of immigration. Our two main immigrant groups, Hispanics and Asians, Overwhelmingly, whether it's P the Pew Research Center, Cato, um, all kinds of, of surveys done over the years show that um, white and, and black Americans overwhelmingly support both free speech and gun rights, and you have almost the reverse percentages with recent immigrants. I mean, this idea that, that people come to our country and suddenly think, oh, I understand. Yes, you have a right to speak even if I disagree with you and even if you are insulting the Prophet Muhammad. No, it doesn't work that way. So what you're seeing 
Um, at places like Berkeley, white right. students are only 30 percent of the population at Berkeley. Asian students alone are 46 percent. That's more than black and white Americans combined. That's why you're getting the biggest attacks on free speech at places like Berkeley. Well, so um, it, that's it's fascinating so it, to watch. So it's not it's not a left right thing as as much as it's a new arrival versus born here thing. So then why wouldn't we be doing everything we can to inculcate our beliefs and understanding of our rights under our constitution in people who just got here? Yes, no, you're right. Well, because we have we have even among, you know, 11th generation Americans, these people called liberals um, and they're as opposed to our fundamental freedoms as True. the newcomers are. Um, but I mean, the ACLU has been sur surprisingly staunch on the issue of free speech, losing a lot of their donors, I might I might add, in the face of these yeah. recent attacks. Um, but you would think that the ACLU would would have an opinion on the importation of people um, adamantly opposed opposed to the mission statement in their charter. Um, I, I mean, you, we are looking at the death of America's fundamental freedoms, as you said in your introduction. Even England doesn't have free speech. Well, no, that's going to be it, it for America, both First Amendment and the Second Amendment, so, as this new generation of non-Americans grows up. So why are our corporations abetting this, making it worse? Kroger, the grocery chain, announced today <laughs> that it will no longer stock magazines that with photographs of assault weapons. Not even clear how they're defining that or what an assault weapon is. But scary looking guns are no longer allowed in photographs in Kroger. Since when are companies sort of piling on speech restrictions here? Well, it's been at least since Trump has come along, maybe before then. Um, but I just, I, I return to my to my refrain, I don't care what your opinion is on free speech or guns or anything else, but please stop pretending you're a rebel. Please stop pretending you're fighting the man when you are just lockstep with corporate America. These, yeah, these exactly. new radicals we have, the resistance, they'll, they'll, they'll check with corporate America, um, you know, Apple and Twitter, Facebook, and their professors to ask if they can wear a question authority t-shirt. Would that be okay? <laughs> Is there, has there ever been a more obedient little cadre of robots than college students? Does anybody think, is anyone brave? Is anybody giving the finger to the man and speaking the truth? Where are those people? What happened? Well, the good news is I'm, I'm following a lot of them on Twitter. Um, I get the impression that we are creating, I mean, and the left is creating, without realizing it, this um, really hilarious and ferocious generation of right-wingers. These college students, you know, they're listening to white privilege all day, um, every moment yeah. of every day. Um, white um, heterosexual men are emerging from college barking at the moon right-wingers um, and they're a lot of fun to follow on Twitter they're very oh, I funny. can't imagine why maybe <laughs> there are <laughs> unintended consequences to everything apparently and culture thank you